Hello my dear students, let's start understanding about the refraction as the light passes through a glass slab. Uh, to study or to draw the refraction through the glass slab, we need to understand what's a glass slab. It's a rectangular piece of glass, uh, it looks like a cuboidal shape just like a matchbox. So a cuboidal piece of glass, it is called a glass slab. For that purpose, you have to first show one of the rectangular face of the glass as it is shown in the diagram over here. So you have to draw one rectangle and then you have to show one oblique incident ray. So one oblique incident ray I am drawing over here. If there is no uh, glass slab over here, if there is no change in the medium, then the ray, this incident ray, it must travel in the straight line. So I am drawing the actual path without refraction of this incident ray by showing the dotted line over here. So I am extending this with the help of dotted line. This is the actual path of the incident ray but due to refraction as we know that this medium is the air and this is a glass this is again the last medium air out of these air and glass we know that air it is optically rarer medium glass is optically denser medium and again when it will come out through the glass slab the air, it will enter into the air which is again a rarer medium. So this is the incident ray. At incident ray we will draw the normal also at the point of incidence. This is normal number 1 and this is incident ray. Then as it is traveling from the rarer medium to the denser medium this is air and this is glass as it is entering from air into the glass it will not go straight like this but it will bend towards normal so i am drawing over here the refracted ray this is the refracted ray Again at this point there will be again refraction so the bending of light in this case will occur two times. One at the entry point where it has entered the glass slab, second is this one. So two times it will undergo bending over here. Now over here also there is change in the medium. It is entering from denser medium that is glass into the air which is a rarer medium. So again I am drawing the normal over here. This is normal number 2. Now it will bend as it is moving from denser to rarer medium it will bend away from normal and we will draw it by drawing a ray moving away from normal but we have to take care the ray which we are drawing it should be parallel to this incident ray this dotted line. So must take care that this line should be parallel to this right while drawing this away from the normal. So this is the diagram now let's label this diagram. This is which ray the ray which is entering into the glass it is in the air this is the incident ray. So this was incident ray. Now we will mark the angle. The angle between the incident ray and the normal number 1. This angle it is angle I. What is angle I? Angle I it is called angle of incidence. Now this ray which has entered into the glass slab 
and it has bent towards normal this ray is the refracted ray the angle between the refracted ray and the normal this angle is represented by small r even this between the refracted ray and the normal this is also the same angle angle r so angle r it is the angle of refraction the last ray which has finally emerged out from the glass slab this ray this is called emergent ray as it is emerging out from the glass slab so this is the emergent ray the angle between the emergent ray and the normal number 2 it is called it is represented by e and this e angle e it is called angle of emergence now as we know that in this glass slab if there was no refraction if there is no glass slab the light has traveled in the straight line like this on this path but now after a refraction two times when it is passing through the lab through the glass slab it this ray of light it has transferred or it has been displaced from its position to this position right so there is change in the position from this to over here through the emergent ray that means it has been displaced from this position to this position so this perpendicular distance it is called lateral displacement this distance is called lateral displacement this shows how much the incident ray has been displaced from its position so this is lateral displacement now there are two important things which we have to remember in uh, the glass slab is that in this the angle of incidence it is greater than the angle of refraction but the angle of incidence it is always equal to the angle of emergence and one more characteristic that the incident ray it is parallel to the emergent ray so these are the characteristic which we have to remember in the refraction of light when it passes through a glass slab i hope that you have understood it and uh, we will be taking the next video for the refraction through glass prism thank you for watching students